Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Uh, hey everyone, this is the uh, Star Wars Black Series Return of the Jedi Boba Fett figure. And please, Disney, do not content ID me into out of space for playing that clip for like three seconds. Um, so yeah, I don't do a lot of, I don't actually do any Star Wars uh, Black Series reviews in this channel, but I want to because I like Boba Fett and Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie. And I saw this and it was pretty cheap. So yeah, I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, I only have one other Star Wars Black Series figure and it is the... Uh, Jedi Knight version of Revan, uh, which I thought was pretty good. But as you can see on the back here, it has a nice read-up of the 40th anniversary. Boba, Lando, Han, Leia, Wicket, Biker Scout, all the ones you can get in this wave. I thought there should probably be more. There probably will be. But yeah, that's what they have right now. Uh, yep, yeah, legal shenanigans, barcode, Disney, Hasbro, all that stuff. Uh, and nice blister card packaging with the Kenner logo on the front. It's very good, but I'm going to rip it open because I don't keep things in the card. So yeah, let's pop it open. And here we have a simple man making his way through the galaxy like his father before him on this mini base. I had to do it. Had to. Had to do it. Um, yeah, here's Boba out of the packaging. And he looks really good. Like, this straight up looks like Boba from the movie. Like, Return of the Jedi. This is my mind's eye version of Boba Fett. Like, this is what I see when I think of Boba. Because I was, uh, my only Star Wars movie I ever had growing up was Phantom Menace and Return of the Jedi. Which is funny because at the beginning and the end. Uh, so I have a very special place for Jedi and Menace. But this boba is perfect. I really like this boba. He looks really good. You can see like all the sculpt work. It looks fantastic. He's wearing the jumpsuit that he wore, that great jumpsuit. You can see the red and the green, the yellow, the armor, the scuffing of the paint, the brown belt, and the blue and uh, yellow jetpack, which I don't know why it doesn't fit with the whole color scheme. I'm sure there's a reason. Uh, I'm sure some of you will probably tell me the reason, but I don't know why it doesn't match. Uh, but that's just a personal thing for me. I've always wanted that. Uh, but he looks really good. Like This really looks like Boba Fett. So let's get him off the base here so we can get a little closer look. Again, really good. Like this sculpt looks fantastic. This is a reuse of the deluxe figure uh, from two years ago, I want to say. Uh, something like that. Uh, I don't have that figure. Uh, I, I never got it. This is my only my second Black Shears figure. And I was like, I need Boba because Boba's one of my favorites. So I had to get him on here. You can see this sculpt looks fantastic. Really good. You can see the branded, uh, the braided Wookiee uh scalps that he has uh you can see the sigil of jaster mareel uh jango fett's mentor uh there's of course the mythosaur on the left pauldron uh, all of his wiring for the uh fiber cord wire which would fire out of here uh, there's an accessory for that as well his ee3 uh you have his flamethrower on this hand as well as a little uh, rocket that fires out a little typing a uh, keypad in there no belt nice the armor looks really good uh, again, he's got his knee pads, which fire darts. Uh, we've seen that happen now because of Book of Boba Fett and Mando. Uh, little pockets here, presumably for other small weapons. Uh, his nice spiked boots. Uh, a very nice uh, armor piece on here in the back. The backpack, the jetpack was really good. Uh, he's got his cape. The cape isn't cloth. I kind of wish it was. I'm not terribly big on the cloth goods material, but this plastic kind of gets in the way. And it makes it a little harder to put this on. And I don't want this thing to pop off. I would prefer it to be cloth so I could either lay it over or under easier. But that's just a personal thing. Uh, I really like the additions of all the scuffed paint. Uh, because, you know, Boba, as a bounty hunter, would get into a lot of scraps. And sure, his armor is durable. It is Durasteel. Or, it was Durasteel. I don't know if it still is. I it might be Beskar in current canon, but it used to be Durasteel uh, before Beskar was a thing. So, yeah, no, it looks, it, it would get scraped because there's just paint on there. So it, it, you can see the silver underneath. You can see the dent in his forehead there from the, uh, from the episode of Clone Wars, which we never got to see. But they did film it, which, uh, where Cad Bane would actually put the dent in his helmet. Uh, that's new canon. We don't know how it happened in old canon. I'm sure there's a reason, but I couldn't tell you. Uh, taking the backpack off, the jetpack off really quick, just so we can get a look at the sculpt in the back. Move that off. You can see the three pegs, uh, which would lock it here, here, here. Uh, like size on here, here, here. Uh, very simple. Nothing super immaculate, but you don't need to worry about that because most of the time, you're going to have the jetpack on there, which uh, I will probably permanently. I don't see a reason to ever take it off unless, you know, unless they made like a, like a 112th scale Slave 1 that I could put this in. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, uh, very fun. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can just take this off. Uh, I don't recommend taking this out. If you can get it in his hands, leave it there. 
because I've had to struggle to put this EE3 into his firing hand for so long because of the shape of the gun. It's accurate, completely accurate. This looks just like Boba's EE3. However, the shape of the hand makes it really hard to get it in there because it's such a it's such a unique grip. Like it's a obviously a revolver, but there's a butt stack on here. So it makes it really hard to get it in there because you have to like loop it around twice and then lock it in. If I mean it's it's easy to do in real life, but not on a figure that doesn't have malleable fingers. So yeah, uh, as for the articulation of this figure, it's got a lot of really good articulation. I'll take this off here. Uh, the head is on a ball joint and a dumbbell, so it can look really deep down. Not so much up, but really not gonna look them up that much anyways. Side to side, very nice, good range of motion. I didn't know that the Black Shift figure had this solid motion range. Uh, I always thought they were a little stiffer, but that's just me. Uh, his tummy is on a ball joint here, so you can move around there. There is a, you can't really see it, because this is an overlay piece, this armor, but he does have a butterfly joint in there. Uh, I can go up that far, over that far. There's a swivel here. Uh, there's only a double jointed, or sorry, single jointed elbow, as well as a knee. Uh, you can get it that far. Uh, however, the wire here does get in the way. Uh, this is on a swivel, the uh, wrist piece, as well as his wrist. So you can really get a good range of motion here with that. Uh, same thing on the right side. Uh, this side has a little bit better range of motion because it doesn't have the wire. Uh, you can kick this far forward. Not at all back. Not even slightly. It gets all in the way. He cannot kick his own butt as far as the knee goes. But there is a swivel here at the knee as well. As well as the upper thigh. As well as a forward-facing pin or rocker on the boot. Which is... I think probably enough articulation that you really need for a figure of this scale anyways. Now let's move on to accessories and see what all it comes with. Now you can probably tell that just looking at this, Boba comes with a lot of accessories. So let's start with the biggest, which is his jetpack. Uh, his jetpack is, again, I've looked at it very well sculpted. The paint looks very good, impressive. I think it's really good. It's a good adaptation of that. Uh, this actually has articulation, uh, the articulation of the thrusters for the flame effects, which are right here which, if I grab them, there are two of them. Uh, they go in here, right here, there's a little peg. Uh, however, I would recommend gripping onto this. Don't put the, don't put these flame effects in while the jetpack's on him, because I'm sure, I'm sure the plastic won't break, but it's, it's very, both of these materials are very soft, so you have to really press hard, and I'm worried it's gonna break. So if it breaks on camera, that's not on me. Oh God, there you go. See, that's one end. You grab the other one, right here on this end too. And then you stick it, there you go. Uh, now they are also on a little bit of a ball joint, so you can move them a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, there is the uh, rocket, the flame effects into the jetpack itself. And there is a full 180 motion on that end. Uh, the, the flame effects can move a little bit side to side, so if you want, have a little bit more of a spread. There you go. But that's not all. The rocket pops out, so you can really get them into some fun poses. Say you already fired the rocket. You might be able to get this on like a flight stand, have it firing. Maybe get a little flame effect piece on the end there. But I'll keep it in there for now, and there you go. That's Boba Jetpack. Now, there is more. There is his whip, his fiber cord whip, which, uh, if you remember, he fires at Luke to grab him in the movie, and it promptly does nothing, because uh, Boba is, an, unfortunately, very inefficient in Return of the Jedi. But, as you can see, it clasps onto the uh, wrist of Boba, which I will grab so I can show you how that works. And here's Boba right here. Uh, see this bit right here? It is his little C-grip, and it clips onto here, so you just got to put it in. Very easy. I don't like the way it looks. It's a little big. Uh, it makes his like wrist look really big, but that's just me. You might like it. That's fine. Uh, and then there you go. There's his fiber cord whip. You can use it to grab on the stuff. However, it doesn't really stay on that tight. So it's more for just an action feature of, of having it. And I won't complain. You know, more things are better. So yeah, uh, that is not all though. There is this fire effect piece, which if I grab Boba yet again, uh, as you can see right here, Right here, this is his flamethrower, which I pointed out earlier. Uh, right here, it clips this. The flame effect clips on there. Uh, in this certain angle, you have to make sure it's pointed up, like so. And then you just... There we go. You don't actually push his arm down a little bit. It makes it a little easier. There we go. That's Boba. Boba with his fire, his flamethrower. That looks dope. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, I like that a lot. I'm a, I really appreciate the fact that they put that in there. They didn't have to, but they did. I appreciate them for it. Now, again, that's not all. There is more. Uh, there are two e EE3s. And I'm wondering why. Well, as you can see, one of these is pristine, in very good condition, very nice paint detail, 
nice copper bronze black wash looks very good it's completely just a revolver that they just put a bunch of metal crap on but so was the case with most things during the early star wars era and he has another one with a yellow stripe in the middle and that is because if you remember luke cuts his e3 in half on the sail barge and as you can see pops right out so you can have the uh, screen accurate part of uh, of uh, Return of the Jedi where he is completely ineffectual, ineffectual. So yeah, there you go. Those are all the accessories, and they are very good accessories. Now for size comparison, uh, I will bring in the only other Black Series figure I have, which is Jedi Knight Revan, and as you can see, about the same height. Uh, it looks like Boba might be a little bit shorter than Revan, which. I guess it's fine. Uh, I don't really know how tall Boba is compared to everybody else, but he always seemed like he would be around the same height, maybe a little shorter. That might just be personal bias in my head, but that is the case. Now for a more substantial size comparison, we have the G.I. Joe Classified Series Spirit as well as the new uh, uh, Marvel Legends Black Panther figure. And yeah, the Black Series is on the smaller side, isn't it? Like, is the... I, I, they're they're shown to be like labeled as six inches, but this feels substantially shorter than the Marvel Legends and and uh, JJ Classified line. So I don't know. That might just that might that might be a thing that everyone's aware of because of. I mean, I'm I mean, I'm not the first person to review these figures, but size comparisons on, but they seem very short. That just might be me. So yeah. <laughs> now for a very weird size comparison because I want to. Uh, we have the original Marvel Legends Bullseye because I just found this figure. It's, it's one of my earliest Marvel Legends figures. And even these, taller than them, taller than Boba. But that just might be because of the, uh, might be Boba a little short or Bullseye's a little tall. But yeah, those are the size comparisons. Well, there you have it. That is the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary Black Series Boba Fett figure. And he is very good. I like him a lot. Uh, I'm very glad I picked him up. I'm probably gonna try and pick up more pla uh, Black Series figures now because I really like him. Uh, I, I had a great time with this one. I love all the accessories. I love the sculpt. I think it's fantastic. And if you'd like to see more, let me know. I'd appreciate that. Uh, this was supposed to go up uh, like May the 5th or May the 4th, but it kept getting delayed and it only just showed up. So I was like, all right, well, I got to make a review now. I got to put this up now quick as I can before the algorithm decides to swap off Star Wars. But yeah, thanks very much for sticking into this. Uh, please like, please subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day.